I hope now we are ready to go to the next presentation. And that will be with a, one of our customer case or cases uh, with Amazon. And here our next speaker is Myla Romero, Director of Information Technology, PLM and Configur Configurator Services. Now Amazon, who has been, uh, will be talking through how you can use, move from a legacy, multiple legacy, legacy system to a modern unified solution. And what are the, you know, how you can unify it on an agnostic multi-level platform. So how you can move from a single siloed based solution to a collaborative solution uh, with for whole. And for that, we have Myla Romero. And Myla is with us right now. Welcome, Myla, to the presentation. I hope you can hear me. I can hear you. Thank you. Perfect. So, Myla, we are really looking forward for your presentation uh, regarding this uh, subject. And with that, I would like to hand it over to you so you can uh, make your presentation. Well, thank you very much for the, the introduction. You're welcome. I'm very, very pleased to be a configured customer at Emerson. The, the energy level that we're seeing as a result of going to a, a different configurator um, has been exceeded even my expectations. So today I'm gonna to walk you through our process of why we chose an agnostic solution and what we're planning to do in the future and lessons that we've learned so far. So first I'm just gonna walk through a little bit about Emerson. We are a Fortune 500 company, number 181. We, we service many multiple areas and consumers. We have the automation solutions division, and then we also have commercial and residential. Some of our accomplishments, uh, the technology that we delivered and configurator that has played a role in that are COVID-19 vaccines. We were involved with uh, three of the vaccines and manufacturing of some of those uh, solutions. Worldwide, we have about uh, approximately 87,000 employees. And we have, we service 170 different manufacturing locations. So as you can see, we, at, we span um, a significant amount of countries and we have to offer so many various uh, solutions that it was, it was paramount that we have a configurator solution that we could span across all of these areas. On the automation solution side, um, we serve multiple industries. Um, they're shown here. We have multiple brands. The brands are important in that those are how we structure our configured products. And this is the focal point of our decision to go with Configit. So on the commercial residential side, they are using a different configurator solution. So this is just specific to automation solutions. What we wanted to do is to upgrade to a transformative ERP agnostic cloud native product configurator. Now I know there's a lot of verbiage there, but it was very important. The foundation of our, our IT are cloud native solutions. So we wanted something that in the future we could evolve it to a cloud native solution. Right now we're, we're hosting Configit in our Azure tenant and that's been going you know, quite well. And in the future, we'll look to look at the, the SaaS version of that. We wanted to include, we wanted to improve customer satisfaction, um, order accuracy and speed of execution. We had issues with, uh, when, when the configured products reached the downstream, they were inaccurate. And it caused, of course, issues with customer satisfaction um, especially on our online store, because that's the, the face of our company. So we wanted to look at something where we could improve those areas. We had issues with stability and performance. I'll talk more through that because of the size of our bill of materials and our products, we ran into issues with uh, performance. And often the system was down and we had to uh, address that so that we, of course, didn't lose customers in the process. We wanted to look at how we could decrease the cost and the complexity of our model maintenance and support. That was very intensive across our, our business units. Um, there's large teams that support the configuration process just due to the manual steps that were involved to, to create uh, solutions. 
And a final area that we're looking at is what we're considering and calling productization. And that's just the foundation before you get started in, in any tool, how are your, your models structured um, in such a way that you can sell them to the, to the customer without uh, intervention. And we want it, so in that area, we were looking at how, how we could improve that product portfolio management and the capabilities for configure to order and engineer to order. So across our platform, there are, we have multiple uh, PLM and ERP systems. We have uh, multiple configuring, we have homegrown solutions, we have uh, standard uh, Oracle and SAP. And so we were looking at how we can bridge all of that. We have multiple BUs with competing strategies and technology ecosystems which made it very challenging to have one point of configuration that we could share across the business. So with that, we developed many customized uh, solutions to support that. And we wanted to look at a configurator that would allow us to minimize the number of customizations that we had and share that across uh, the different platforms. We also looked at, in the past, we've, we've always selected one vendor and it was monolithic, it was bundled together with, with other solutions. As part of our new journey, what we wanted to do is separate some of those systems so they're not bundled and use the technology that was best fit. So the area that was first in that uh, new ideology was config in the configurator solution, where we decoupled it from the vendors that we've, we've used in the past that provided the entire solution. We wanted to look, we have a large footprint. We have 3,000 configurable products, each of which has very, they're varying complexity from, you know, very simple to highly complex. Um, again, we had to look at solutions outside of what was offered from the vendor because we couldn't handle some of that complexity. We have highly configurable, heavy engineering processes. We're a, a high engineer to order. Um, shop and we do look at opportunities to to transform those engineer to orders to CTO but it is a part of many of the the business units they have a, a high volume of ETOs per day and then we looked at you know who are the multiple consumers of configuration data we looked at we we service our global online store we service um, each of those business units and then we have internal processes and also the configurator tool that we use today service some of those thir other third party um, solutions. We use the, the same configurator for that. The challenges that we had were poor performance, um, large bombs, we had millions of, of rules. The frequent user interface, we had corruption with our user interface. There was constant rework. Um, we, and that took up to two days just to recreate a user interface. We had bomb explosion issues with, with corruption. You know, prior to doing a configuration, we'd see there, were, there, there was data missing, again, filtering downstream. We had poor coding practices. We, we utilized multiple vendors to, to help with the code, again, because we didn't have a, an out-of-the-box solution that we could just... Uh, perform and handle our complexity. So we ended up um, coding a lot of that. And then and in turn, uh, we ended up with poor code that degraded and a lot of times um, brought the system down. Across the board, we lacked standardization. We, we needed harmonization. There are multiple ways for the same solution to do the same thing. So we wanted to find a way where we could unify that. And again, as I mentioned, we had frequent downtime and lack of stability. When we did have issues, it took very, uh, very long to troubleshoot and resolve uh, logic errors. So a lot of times the business would be down um, and, it, and it wasn't just one product, multiple products were down because of the way that the configurator worked. Um, we'd have to recreate each model individually when there are issues. So one of the advantages that we've already seen with, with Configit is if you do have that type of issue, you can just propagate it to all of the models at once instead of um, individually. 
because as you can imagine, having 3,000 models would take a very long time to recreate. This is a diagram of what we're looking to do with Configit. Our vision is to have Configit and, uh, and PLM connected. We have about, uh, I'd say, five different PLM systems. We have numerous CAD systems. And again, we have multiple configurators systems. So in working through our proof of concept with Configit, in the help of uh, their vendors, we worked through a diagram such as this and how we could unify both of those areas. Because one of the reasons that um, now I, previously I was over configurator and now we're, we're moving more to the, the shared relationship with PLM and creating uh, communities of practice, practices on both sides so that we can look at the opportunity and how we can share the bill of material data as well as config it across both of those platforms. So that's a, a, in our next phase, but definitely a key focal point um, that we've been asked to, to look at. So with that, we're going to look at uh, the E-BOM, the, e the sales bomb, how that all ties together and build that, the ecosystem to support that. Along with uh, using um, our bomb converter, we're looking to rationalize some of our PLM systems where we can and just create this, this community, or I should say not a community, but a doorway to basically our ecosystem and digital strategy that starts with Configit. So as far as optimization, we, we've looked at multiple areas to, to see where we can optimize. So we, we created a specific team for productization as a result of going to config it, we realized that it wasn't a matter of just choosing the technology, but actually having the products in such a state that we could move to, to shape and create so that it was ready to go into the tools such as config it. So what we've noticed is many of the teams and groups do not have documentation for, for some of the logic. They were being handled via spreadsheets, in some cases, um, just the person had that, that knowledge. And so what we wanted to do is create a team that prior to even looking and getting into config it, we ensured that their models were correctly defined. And we worked on their product foundation. So again, it wasn't just for configure to order, but also looking at what they were doing in the PLS, PLM system so that we could you know, accurately push that through. Some of the tools that we've looked at to, autom to automate this process were rule import from PLM to config it. As part of that productization team, they have created a, a tool that will automatically create the rules and then push that logic to config it. And this was to take advantage of um, some other opportunities just to, uh, to save the team some time. This is a tool that they had today in our in our old configurator that we wanted to carry over to config it, but also utilize the new capability that we'll be getting from, from going to config it. We looked at um, automated bomb creation, and this is an area that the config it team has worked closely with our vendor as well as um, our internal team. And just to look at um, our complexity, we have, again, very, very complex models. In some cases, we have um, what you called uh, component level modeling. And so some of our bill of materials exceeded um, our previous configured, <coughs> configurator recommended size. So that, that automation will ensure that we have uh, accuracy and that we can push it to our, our ERP systems. And again, we're looking for, in everything that we're doing, we're looking to make sure that it's ERP agnostic just because we do handle multiple ERP systems. We have a rule conversion tool that the Configit team helped us create because we have over 2 million legacy rules in our current configurator. We needed something that if a team was ready to convert as is, we had a tool to do that. And so that was part of um, what's been developed in our, in our first phases. We've created a tool for automated test cases to validate 
the configurations and also create the, the timings and benchmarks around the same. The user interface was uh, a pain point, as mentioned. So we have a team that's focused on the user experience. What we wanted to do in the past, we had a separate user interface for internal and a separate user interface for external. What we've done is created a, a focus team that will create one uh, user interface. And again, the energy surrounding this was because of the capability that we'd be getting with Configit. We have built um, an engine using modernized technology so that we can have a, a common user experience. We have a, a product advisor which guides which, which products before you, you do the configuration. So we're working with those teams to create that seamless experience and user interface, and then the, we can push it um, to config it. And all of that we've done so far, we've, as part of our innovation, we're able to do that um, dynamically to generate that. The, a piece of the optimization, just the cross-functional engagement, just the high level of synergy between engineering, the configuration teams, and sales and sales operations. So now we're working, um, very, I say much better since we've had Configit. We can share the information across teams much better. And there's just smoother handoffs when we have uh, solutions that are shared. This is a diagram of our uh, basically our methodology of how we're doing the implementation. We didn't want to go big bang. Um, that's not recommended again because of our, the size of our, our footprint. So we looked at how could we segregate the models and just take a sample size of each business group's models and then that represents the whole. And then that's just to, to do the baseline functionality and then we build that out before we roll out their, the rest of their product lines. We've created um, an education program. All of the SMEs have been trained in, in Configit. And then we've, we've done train the trainer with um, the other groups. And we've done an Emerson version of the training it just, as part of that curriculum. We're looking at you know, just what are our principles? How do we iterate um, basic product principles? And then again, that product structure capability and aligning to uh, the, the principles that we want for those products and ensuring that each group has those defined as, as needed. And, and then finally, we're, or not, I shouldn't say finally, we're looking at you know, what's our MVP design, the minimal viable product to give um, the groups. And then we do design reviews and demos and then lessons learned. And through that, we've, we have during our journey, you know, we've had um, we've had to pivot at times, but there were, it was a great learning opportunity um, for the group. And we just iterate on this. And now um, I'm actually in, at our corporate headquarters this week um, because of the, what we've done so far, we have um, several groups that are ready to, to be the next group in line to get their products um, in config. Some of our key learnings, the do's and don'ts. We, we've been on this journey for six months. We started in October and it's a three-year program. We've laid it out um, according to the footprint for those that are currently in our tool and then those who, who aren't using a tool at all. So we've tried to address both use cases. We have different levels of product maturity across the groups. We have some, some models that are very simple, again, and some that are very complex, but we wanted to start uh, somewhere. And so one of our, some of our learnings is, one, just make sure your vendor partner understands your processes and, and product lines. So we've had a vendor that we've worked with for years um, that we chose for this effort, mainly because they, they understood our product lines they got certified in Configit. They quickly learned, and we've been able to, to move fast because of those learnings. We, we wanted to make sure that, again, the productization was in place, and that was, was understood. Uh, we looked at 
the training program, education was was very important to, to ensure that we had a baseline. It gave our users the ability to, to go as part of change management to understand the functionality of config it and to formulate what they wanted out of the tool. What we didn't want to do is recreate what we've done in the previous tool and just bring that into config it. Because we're getting additional functionality in config it, we want to make sure that we're, we're taking advantage of that. One of the things that we, we did is we're using the SAFE met methodology to go agile, and that's allowed us to, to move quickly while allowing us to pivot if we need to. And so that's, we've gotten good feedback from our business groups and our stakeholders. We've been able to show value every two weeks back to our stakeholders and then adjust as we need to um, based upon that, that feedback. So we wanted to make sure to just, um, we created models so that the, the groups could learn and understand uh, config it better, hands-on. They could shape what they wanted for the future. So that was very important that they had that ability to, to see the, the tool. Some of the don'ts um, that we learned in the process is you need to establish naming conventions because in some cases there's there's some things that you can't go back you're not able to adjust we need to make sure that we had unification across the business units um, for that area and that has allowed us to to move and sync the harmonization that i spoke of um, previously has allowed us to to move a little bit faster and have agreement um, across the board. We don't want to be heavy in, in governance, but we do want to ensure that we give enough direction and a playbook for the groups to be successful during this um, program. We, of course, did not go big bang. We, we took it in, in small chunks and then you know, pivot as, as we need to, and then we'll accelerate once we have the, the automation tools um, in place. One of our learnings is we, we didn't want to heavily customize. We wanted to utilize global solutions that were, that were scalable and only go to a business unit specific where their use case necessitated it. And through that, we've had some, you know, some growing pains there, but the more that people understand the capability of the tool, the more that they've gotten on board um, for some of the previous solutions and customizations that they had. So across the board, um, we, we have strong engagement from our, our corporate, our president on config it, and just the powerful transformative tool that it is. It's going to allow us to rationalize, again, some of the tools that we've had um, in the past. There are several versions of an ERP system we can now replace the the configurator with one configurator replacing um, all of the homegrown and other vendor configurators that we had. Um, so I'm just very pleased on the journey so far. We're still new, we're still learning, but I know this time next year, I'm excited to share the progress um, because I know we'll be even further at that point. So thank you very much for your time um, and I appreciate it. Thank you.